We suggest we now resume. We'll be joined shortly by other participants who will be connecting from Rome, where they're uh, holding a conference on uh, doubling the uh, tender tunnel. Well, thank you. I'd also to thank the ceremonial department of the Valle d'Aosta region. I'd also like to thank uh, the department uh, that uh, reports to me and then the president of INVA and naturally European Affairs Department. They're my guardian angels in following all these matters and I also obviously thank the political authorities Corrado Jordan who's our special envoy for Switzerland because like a Saint Bernard uh, dogs he lives on the border and Franco Malis, too, is our eyes in Rome, and I thank him for the work he's doing. A few uh, topics uh, about uh, what we're here for now. I'll speak in uh, French. Nicolas Graf is a young person who's part of USALP, and there's been this... Uh, new feature in the European uh, Union uh, that asks the various uh, entities uh, uh, of the European Union to have young people as witnesses and as key players on various topics. Nicholas belongs to a generation that's very distant from us and so whatever is digital is part of his daily life. Now what do you think about the discussion that's been held so far? Well, I think we have to create spaces and affinities for all the. Do you see any risks in what uh, we've heard about today? We started talking about AI that's going to be part of our lives and part of your life too, obviously. We uh, mentioned some of the risks and dangers when we uh, spoke with uh, Benny Fay, the rapporteur. What do you think about AI? Well, there's the, there are already young people who can uh, work from their Alpine uh, residences uh, so as to avoid depopulation. Can uh, digital matters uh, be uh, a danger? I have three. Uh, children, uh, the uh, eldest have already understood the uh, dangers of uh, digital manners, but the 12 year old uh, uh, lives for TikTok. And there's also the Chinese menace, because you know that the European authorities have forbidden TikTok because there's a danger of being spied on. What did you say about this relationship between young people and new technologies? Well, it's important to educate young people at school, to educate young people because these are new technologies and it's essential we take care. Is it useful for you as young people to get together for an exchange of opinion from your different observatories? Um, also within the uh, rationale of USALP, well, yes, certainly it's an excellent tool in the field of uh, research, but there are also, as you said, risks. And I think especially for young people, it's important to be a little prepared before. So education uh, training is a central issue and it obviously starts at school, in uh, my opinion. Yes, for the time being, I'd say that it's rather rare that there be any digital education at schools. I don't know whether you agree, but uh, schools are, are fairly conservative. 
well, yes, in Austria, where I come from too, uh, uh, they're fairly conservative in uh, the schooling system and we don't have much education about uh, social media. Let's now come to the municipalities. Uh, Valle d'Aosta has 74 municipalities and the whole Alpine region has a number of mountain uh, municipalities. Earlier, we talked about the risks also for poor rural communities, communities where there's tourism, and therefore there is a certain wealth, but other municipalities that instead, both because of the climate change that's uh, foreseeable, um, but also in the light, I say this for the nth time, uh, because of the uh, demographic decline over the years, mountains have been um, menaced by depopulation, by uh, residents uh, leaving to live in cities and um, this has happened in Validausta and this is uh, uh, to be summed as we heard from uh, Professor Rosina's research. Uh, he's a demographer from the Catholic University of uh, Milan and he uh, gave us a very disquieting result of what uh, Validausta will be in 2024. Uh, Alex Mileto is um, the mayor of uh, Validasta, but also head of the uh, Association of Mayors. You represent uh, large uh, municipalities like Aosta or your own, but also those that are called uh, very small dust communities under, say, uh, 40 citizens, uh, and there's a special crisis. Uh, in the mid-mountain municipalities. What do you think about this, uh, uh, Alex? Well, yes, you gave us a snapshot of the 74 municipalities where situations vary enormously. Each one is uh, special, specific, and uh, thank goodness each and every one is beautiful. A digitalization can uh, the uh, link that uh, brings all these uh, municipalities together because we have to grasp this opportunity. We've got to ensure that technology that increasingly is part of our daily lives would allow us to um, destroy the barriers that exist today between the smaller and the bigger and the mid-mountain communities because uh, obtaining services, the possibility that our citizens, whether residential or tourist citizens, be able to always be connected technologically and carry out their activities. That's what in the immediate future, but I think also more in the long term, will allow us to reconquer the position that uh, the less advantaged municipalities from a geographical standpoint and also in terms of population are currently experiencing. So I think that on behalf of all the 74 municipalities of Valle d'Aosta, digitalization is a um, an opportunity, should not be wasted to fill this uh, territorial uh, gap. We're experiencing uh, aging of the Valle d'Aosta communities in the Mont Servin, where I come from. The average age of inhabitants is around 50, and this is true also for municipal employees. The problem of, I mean, we all tend to be very conservative. Thank goodness faxes have disappeared, fax machines. It's only the telecom people uh, who uh, still use faxes when uh, you have to uh, cancel your uh, subscription and you have to look up some old fax machine to be able to inform them because that's the way officially you're supposed to. Yes, training certainly is a, a key element uh, that's essential for the uh, administrative activity of all our entities. We too are facing a generational uh, shift um, because, uh, thank goodness, because of the turnover past years, we're returning to a situation in which we can make new hires and therefore uh, face our daily activities. Education is certainly necessary because these technological instruments um, and everything that has to do with technology and the public can be an instrument to solve certain age-old 
problems, but also can be an instrument to streamline a number of uh, uh, provisions. You were talking about uh, uh, the various uh, rules and uh, decisions. Clearly, personnel involved in this must be adequately uh, trained, but this generational shift that I was talking about certainly will favor this increasingly uh, frequent use of technology in uh, public administration departments too. This to the advantage not only of administrators and uh, municipal uh, employees, but also of citizens who will be able to avoid having to go personally to uh, the municipal offices. They'll be able to have everything online. Fabio Caroso, I know you have to uh, leave uh, to talk about the Col di Tenda which basically is linked to, to innovation because you are doubling the tender tunnel that, that dates back to uh, two centuries ago. And so that has to do with improving infrastructure as well. And now as Piedmontese uh, Council, is there any interest uh, that you see in uh, maintaining uh, digital activities and encouraging them in rural and mountain areas well yes as all regions it's some years now that we're paying great attention to the uh, population drain in uh, mountain and rural areas uh, areas that have an amazing uh, uh, tourist vocation that are rediscovered today as being very beautiful with a quality of life that could be very interesting but they lack digitalization, but also several services are lacking. And so it's some years now that we've started to pay attention to these territories. And we're listening to the voices of all our mayors and presidents of the various unions to see what's important uh, and important immediately. So not being connected uh, everywhere slows things down. As I was saying earlier, it slows down, especially whatever has to do with young people, the possibility of smart working uh, and also health services. Were we able to have uh, open borders, it would be a less serious problem. We've also done some experiments in the field. We launched a uh, a competition and we financed 107 service containers we started working with people who were present uh, in our territories to give services to our citizens for instance there are small uh, shops that were uh, centers for aggregation where people would go to uh, have a coffee in the evening but then one starts to chat uh, around the cafe table and so we've opened these shops uh, some already were present and we're trying to create innovation and within these shops uh, they're the uh, front runners in these territories we try to understand what can be necessary and from one valley to another the information we get back is fairly different but everyone says we need digitalization and innovative service we also asked another interesting question because i think one also must not just work in a uh, single direction we also had a competition uh, about uh, mountain residents citizens uh, so we funded families under the age of 40 who can work through smart working and we've given them the possibility to buy the house here we spent about 11 million euro and in some small municipalities we were able to attract four or five families now the mayors have the problem of having school buses because in one municipality uh, uh, four families arrived each with three children so that means that they're uh, new children to be able to uh, feed our schools and but they have to be uh, taken to school every day fabio you were courageous enough to help a very very small municipality of almira for the 20 million of the so-called borghi the hamlets but it was uh, something of a political choice too. Well, it's not the Piedmont region that uh, actually took that decision. I actually wouldn't have 
funded uh, such a small municipality with 20 million uh, euros. I think it was an error, but it certainly is a great opportunity for the municipality of Elva. They're working with all the uh, universities. They're changing the municipality. They're very concerned because they have to spend the money. Yes, it's a, a common uh, concern for all Italian hamlets, but it certainly is the most digitalized uh, uh, municipality with the more uh, university outposts than any other town. Uh, Laurence uh, Boetti Forestier can tell us something about the Région Sud, about uh, uh, Nice, uh, Côte d'Azur. In these areas, there are rural territories and also mountain territories, and that's a very interesting opportunity. Thank you for inviting me, and I'm delighted to be here today in this wonderful region, uh, in these wonderful surroundings, and especially thank you, uh, President. I bring you the greetings of uh, the uh, Sud Provence Côte d'Azur province. So that's what I uh, knew how to say in uh, Italian, but uh, I'm very happy to be here today with you, or right in the heart of the Alps. And as far as the Région Sud, uh, Provence Côte d'Azur, the question of being connected is clearly a key issue because uh, as uh, you explained very clearly, the uh, southern region includes uh, large cities along the uh, coast, uh, Toulon, Marseille, and Nice, but it's also the hinterland um, where there are rural areas. I am lucky enough to live in the uh, Roya Valley. The Roya Valley links uh, two states, France and Italy, in three regions, uh, Piedmont, Liguria and uh, Sud uh, Provence Côte d'Azur and uh, Monaco. And this is a, a very important area if we want to uh, remain in these areas. The territories obviously have to have a very good networks. And I'm proud to be able to tell you today that the uh, southern region has funded uh, the full amount necessary to uh, install uh, fiber optics. Uh, without this, nothing would be possible. We have several projects that, that have been included under the heading of smart villages. Um, I'll say this fairly quickly, but all this is part of the uh, FEDER funds from the European Union, more than 15 million euro that have been contributed by our region to take it to the last mile to start from Nice means also means going 60 kilometers further away to be connected in the same way. So it's also a question of democracy, territorial democracy. Without information, communication, there'll be a social fracture. And uh, as you are able to see in the news, uh, we're very vigilant uh, about maintaining our young people in our territories, providing them with full information. So this information requires a good network. It uh, is also based on smart policies and also this participative form of democracy. Let me give you an example. We have uh, areas that are installed by the region. These are uh, homes that are connected, that provide proximity services, postal services. In these uh, uh, third party places, one can have exchanges. So there's a social link, there's social connections, there's this democracy that I'm so, uh, I feel so important. It's the possibility of living together in this uh, area of the uh, Alpine uh, chain. It's question of fighting again to medical diversification. Uh, yesterday, I was lucky enough to, I was uh, shown a medical drone that's funded uh, by the region. So this drone can uh, deliver, it's still experimental. It uh, will be able to deliver medicines to hospitals and it will also be able to deliver uh, laboratory specimens. Uh, 
when necessary. So this means that we can remain in our villages, we can work, we can be educated and trained. And then there's also the question of culture. One always talks about uh, information and lots of other things, but what's key today is to have access uh, to have culture, this for our children with uh, an excellent level of resolution and also with excellent connections. So it means uh, equal opportunities, access to networks, to uh, medical services, uh, proximity services. And with my colleague from the Piedmont region, we have been working together because there's a second pillar too, which is mobility. Without mobility, uh, we're working on the Nice around train line because the two pillars are the two, we walk on two legs. We have to have a digital network to be able to work uh, for our businesses, but it also means being able to travel, to move. And uh, we must cooperate between uh, urban territories and uh, rural territories and metropolitan cities must collaborate with rural areas. So thank you. Thank you, Laurence. It's really very interesting. Let me address to Sebastiano Callari, the regional assessor for uh, digital matters. Um, it's really very interesting what we're doing in these years. On the one hand, we have Interreg, uh, Italy and Switzerland, in your case, Austria, Slovenia. On the other hand, we're working with Euro regions, we will relaunch Alp Med in January, the same uh, area as covered by Alcotra. And of course, we have uh, common European funds like uh, Alpine Space, and especially the political and technical functions of EUSAL, the macro Alpine region. And it's an important uh, example of other similar realities in Europe. And it's a different way of thinking of European Union through proximity connections. So this is very important, isn't it? Um, entertaining good neighboring relations. Let me also thank for this invitation. It's an extraordinary place. And it's also a symbolic place. How can we bring innovation even in the highest mountains? My congratulations. It's an important opportunity for us uh, since uh, neighboring countries like Slovenia and Croatia joined the European, Union, the European Union only a short time ago. And so we are leading projects uh, which share best practices. We maintained over time a public IT company, a regional company, which helps us uh, advance uh, in digitalization. A few years ago, we, you know, since it's rather expensive, we thought, well, maybe it's too expensive. But then we realized that the aim of that company was no longer that of developing software programs. Since uh, it's the large corporations and probably uh, AI that will be doing, will be doing that. Well, we need digital skills. During the press conference, I was saying that we have used the National Recovering Resilience Fund funds to, for the purpose of training, especially in rural and mountain areas, so that some of the larger municipalities can lead the way with other municipalities to progress. So with Slovenia and Croatia, we're helping in uh, European projects. 
so they, they struggle a little bit in that respect, and we help them. Let me emphasize that young people complain about lack of connectivity. Yes, it's true. In Italy, we were lagging behind. In 2015, somebody thought that the broadband plan had to be centralized, excluding the regions. Even the uh, new plan, the PNNR, repeated the mistake, uh, giving municipalities some powers without considering that they don't yet have digi sufficient digital skills uh, and uh, not even public servants, uh, enough public servants, because again, some people had the bad idea of discontinuing contests in the public uh, sector because public servants uh, were in excess, uh, but that was not the case, and now they're lacking. And so together with the ANCHI, an association which is called COMPA, it, which is developing advanced uh, training for our civil servants uh, in our region. It's one of the dangers is to transfer the shortcomings of paper to a computer. The shortcomings remain, of course. So we need di different digital infrastructures. We must really think differently compared to paper. It's no longer an analog world, it's a digital world. And we can cross the whole world in a jiffy. We learned a lot from the pandemic. Without a digital motorway, the public administration wouldn't have made it because almost 90% of our civil servants worked from remote for months. And we were able to work almost as if nothing had happened. And that shows that we need further efforts uh, so that uh, also in terms of the competition or the competitive position of our companies, adequate infrastructures are needed for them to be competitive and resilient compared to global corporations um, who have an edge on that. And you pay specific attention to the mountain part of your territory. In Friuli Venezia Giulia, you do have uh, mountain areas and you pay special attention to it. Yes, like Piedmont and uh, of course some other regions, the majority of our land is in the mountains or on the hills. And so Friuli Venezia Giulia, yes, is, is let's say, also on the sea, but the mountain areas were really struggling. Struggling because of the exodus of people, the dramatic exodus, actually. There are, by the way, very special cultures there. Friulano is, a bit, is considered a, a, a real language, not just a dialect. And in those areas, it is still very much used in daily life in doing things. So in that respect, uh, we did something very important. Through an agreement signed with Google, we managed to get the internet in the Friulano language, so to get the translation for the elderly population especially, so that they can read the minutes of uh, public meetings, uh, especially to the benefit of uh, senior citizens. And then, uh, now, Alain Marais, préfet district d'entremont. 
Well, some time ago, a document was submitted, uh, which was about an agreement between the plain and the mountains, uh, and the model for that agreement comes from Switzerland, uh, where in past centuries, uh, the whole thing began. So your role in uh, USAUP is uh, to pay great attention and give priority to the mountains. Exactly. Let me greet all of you. Let me thank you for your invitation to this conference. Yes, I come from the northern part of the Great St. Bernard, uh, and uh, I collaborated in various interreg projects uh, with the southern part of it, i.e. with the Corrado Jardin, who is uh, representing that region. Mountain collaboration, mountain area collaboration, it's always a matter for discussion and tension too. I come from Valais and there we have uh, the Rhone Plain and then uh, the side valleys uh, too. And uh, everybody's concerned. about demographic issues. Uh, of course, the Rhone area has uh, a voice, economic terms, in social terms, in demographic terms. And of course, it's true that Digital literacy is very important, and uh, we have uh, very, very small villages uh, with a very small budget and other larger municipalities uh, who can fund uh, a lot. I mean, they have a huge annual budget that they can use, for example, for to provide uh, IT services. Uh, where small municipalities uh, might have just one uh, person dealing with, you know, all the IT aspects. Uh, so how can we do about it? Uh, so we have a, a program uh, which is about a set of uh, skills and uh, competencies uh, to be put at the disposal of the community. It's mostly about digital literacy, it's mostly about meeting the citizens' needs. And this center also relies on uh, human resources uh, for, uh, yes, literacy, for digital literacy, for cybersecurity. And they are entrusted with helping small municipalities, especially to help them towards a digital, greater digital literacy. There are specific guidelines about, uh, about document security uh, and so on and so forth. What about connectivity? I have a small example in this respect. I come from a valley where tourism plays a very important role in the economy uh, with the Verbier Mountain Resort. Tourism developed in the second uh, half of the 20th century. And uh, there are many people, you know, who came to the mountains for their holidays. And during the pandemic, uh, because of uh, isolation, because of restrictions, and because of uh, remote work, uh, smart working, people, well, many people left the cities uh, and uh, came to their second homes. Well, they actually moved their residence there because we have a very good connectivity there. So, so every family has uh, can rely on 
an optical fiber connection. That's very, very interesting because it enables people to actually work from home. Well, now the rate of employment uh, of smart working has dropped, but uh, it's not as high as it was, uh, but it still, it still plays an important role thanks to connectivity. I think Carlo might have a stroke when he hears this. Uh, well, he says, let's go round the table a second time. I think we've been exhaustive enough. Uh, those uh, who know me, uh, well, they know that I think that being short is a true talent. Uh, so I'd like to thank all the various uh, participants so that we can uh, go up to Heilbronner Peak uh, a little bit earlier. In the forthcoming Swiss uh, Assembly, we we'll certainly repeat it. Uh, and I think it, it's very important to meet. And in Switzerland, we're going to do that in a plenary format uh, because we need to speed up uh, to accelerate the development uh, of the Alpine region following other macro regions who started uh, before us. We will also further develop Almed, uh, which remained kind of dormant in the past few years. Uh, we'll relaunch it because it's so important to have political bodies strengthening cross-border cooperation. We will also sign an agreement with the Département de Savoie and also with the Département de Savoie because there are specific needs to be met. And the most important need is to have uh, citizens and especially young people meet. It is useless to talk about Europe and transporter cooperation if it just remains in a technical and political level. We had very, very interesting experiences in transporter cooperation. We, in the schools on Monday, we were going to, to talk about uh, Erasmus plays such an important role, which is not just about you're about students, but it will include teachers as well, and even school managers. Uh, Frank Bocosara is uh, a school manager at uh, the language high school of Cormayeur, and he spent some time in Norway to see how sports language schools work there so as to export that model. There is so much to do, and Altmed uh, has the fantastic peculiarity of gathering together so many important regions and interesting regions. So, so Altmed, well, Mediterranean, but does it really play a role? But just think of Friuli Venezia Giulia. It combines both the Mediterranean and the mountains, and you know, Slovenia and Croatia have both of them. Isn't it interesting? And I always think of the uh, Occidental anchovy fellows. They are, uh, Mr. Carros is not here, so I'm not going to talk about Banya Cauda, the Piedmont uh, delicacy. So, but, but it was, it's such important, the mountaineers, from, they came down from the mountains to buy anchovies, and also because of salt taxes, they would reach Piedmont to, and, and sell anchovies there. And then the cunning Piedmontese turned all of that in that, um, I mean, delicious dish, which is banya calda. Well, of course, I'm joking, but that shows how important these links are. And I'm now looking at Corrado Giorda, who's dealing with it. So this is also a time to talk about a great saint, uh, Saint Bernard of Aosta. Uh, so it's not Saint Bernard uh, of Monton, uh, but Saint Bernard of Aosta. Mm -hmm. Of course, I don't want to be polemic about it. The Swiss know it because, you know, they, they have the chamois and dogs. Uh, we have none of that, but we can say that this great saint uh, who will be remembered a bit everywhere. I've been in Val Formazza. I was in Novara because, as you know, this uh, 
saint died in Novara on his way back from a meeting with an emperor who was probably a cousin of his. Here we should remember that the patron of the Alps in 1923 officially became the patron of the Alps and ultimately the Mark European region has a protector in the sky and maybe we owe this beautiful sunny day that we are going to enjoy at Heilbronner Peak to him. Thank you all.